go live. Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming and welcome to G Quad Garden Quilt and Art Show, where good friends become family and family is everything. I don't know what's going on with these glasses today. They're all foggy, whatever. Hi, sissy. Thank you for coming and welcome. Hey, Kay Renee's Garden. Are you between sit-ups or jumping jacks? Or however. And by the way, uh, Kay Renee, I still have family. Family in Linwood real close to you. When Auntie Joanne used to live there, I did too. Hey, my Renaissance grandma, Kay Renee. <laughs> you laugh at about between sit-ups. You know, I come from a family that works out all the time, all day, every day. Somebody is doing some sport. In fact, I think I just sent you a couple things on IG just for you to see of some family. Oh, I'm going to faint. <laughs> My sister, Yankee sister, must be frozen out of her garden. She, she it, it was 29 degrees, you, you fam. You know, I always say you guys. 29 degrees this morning in Connecticut, 6B. And I don't mean to be laughing or being rude and disrespectful because the Yankee sister been showing off in her garden all over the place because she know I got a new titanium knee and I can't get to my garden. So she's been showing out. Um, my sister said she was going to tell you, Yankee sister, I was doing a snow dance hoping it snowed on everybody's stuff that started ahead of me. Hola, Bouge Prepper. Thanks for coming and welcome, welcome, welcome. I appreciate each and every one of you. I appreciate those of you in the bushes. I know what time of day it is all over the country. It's a work day. And I know that people are busy. No showers yesterday. I was up in your neck of the woods yesterday, sort of. I was in Shelton. That was about two minutes from Waterbury. I thought about I thought about you. My Renaissance grandma. Thank you for coming and welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, I have to confess, you guys, I have been a real bum this year. Auntie Joanne, our treasured home. Thank you for coming and welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm going to bend over real close to the screen because I had to go to the doctor yesterday and I had to take off one of my earrings. So it ended up in the car. So look at, I put on one of my earrings from our treasured home. I have a couple of people in the family who make earrings and our treasured home is one of them. And these are some of the earrings I received from her and her granddaughter, and I just love them. Throw out a few little pearls, you know, to bring them out, bring them out. Barb Brownlee, thank you for coming and welcome, welcome, welcome. Woohoo! Temperature in the tens the last few days in the morning and very windy. Listening while at work. Appreciate you. Appreciate all of y'all. For those who are here for the replay, thank you for coming. I appreciate you. I appreciate the moderators. Those are the names that are in blue are moderators. The names in green are people who are members of the Friends and Family Club. I appreciate each of you and the Friends and Family Club, for those of you who would like to join and support the channel, it's $1.99 per month and 100% of the produce, uh, produce proceeds come from go to, I mean, 100% of the proceeds go to creating content on the channel. So, Bougie Prepper, did you make your apple, did you make your apple cake yet? I'm so excited. Auntie Joanne, I should drop a link. Auntie Joanne and Uncle, Uncle Roscoe, I don't know whether I made one or two apple cakes when I was out there for my month my month anniversary. I know I made cornbread every day in the cast iron skillet 
now she done stole my recipe. And <laughs> I just want to say, when I got there, she has a giant cast iron skillet. And I looked, I looked, because she has like... A, her her cabinets are bigger than my whole apartment so i look for them and for it and the big one that i wanted to use was under the oven so i got it out and seasoned it because she had washed she had washed it to death she had cleaned it cleaned it cleaned it you know like how the cast iron skill is supposed to be seasoned and slightly greasy now that i've got it all broken back in Oh, she's using it. She's making the cornbread now. <laughs> every week, every week. I casing 55. Thank you for coming and welcome. I appreciate. Oh, Nancy said her granddaughter, Anastasia, picked out all of the earrings. Well, she picked out the ones Auntie Joanne's going to get one year, duplicating my recipe. Oh, you guys, guess what? I've been making this. I've been making, what is it? Oh, the banana bread. I have a different recipe than everybody else. And today I was opening a bag of flour, not my usual brand. And guess what? I found my original recipe that I've been using for 20 years on the back of this bag of flour. When we were growing up, my mom used to make pancakes. Like when we, we always had a bunch of people at our house and daddy always had a big garden and everybody came to our, our house, like mealtime. We just ate. We had a big family anyway. There were six of us kids, my mom and dad, and my maternal grandmother was our nanny. She lived with us most of the time. Hello, Mike's chaotic gardening. I don't know if I said hello. If I didn't, I apologize. Mr. President, is that is that our president from Texas or not or not? My Renaissance grandma, thank you. And I'm so excited. I have so many things to tell you all. So I was going to let a few more people come in. I'm so excited because oh, one, one of our subscribers said she almost spit her tea out last week when I was telling her about beets from the garden. Well, I cooked them. They're not from my garden. They're from my friend's garden. But I got a couple more dirty. Oh, Bougie thinks you sound like Obama. That's funny. Shiloh and Ezra said hello. Hi, kids. Auntie Ellen has to put some stuff in our secret place when you're coming by again. I have some molasses for your grandma to make some special treats. Oh, guess what? <clears throat> so excited. I'm swallowing air. I, I have a new helper temporarily since I'm under the weather with this knee. And she's from Jamaica. And she was telling me about a recipe for Jamaican, they call it Jamaican lemonade, and it's made with lime and molasses. I bought a gallon of molasses. Yes, I plan on using it in the garden, in whatever, whatever. I put some in coffee lately under from a recipe from Unbiased LLC, and it was really good. It was really good. I just want you to see all the dirt in them, them there beets. These are dirty beets cooking from scratch. So I would, I'm going to make some pickled beets. <clears throat> Let me see. <clears throat> Getting excited, swallowing air. So I have the chat up so that I can see what you guys are doing. Speaking of which, oh, and I want to thank each and every one of you for your loyalty and your subscription. Oh, my gosh. Bakari is a new member. You guys, Bakari is my only grandson, and he is the newest member to the Nana channel. So maybe by supporting the channel now, he won't have to take care of me when I'm a hundred years old, 
I'm three quarters of a century. When I get to 100, Bakari, I expect you to step it up a little. So you guys, please welcome Bakari to the family, uh, the YouTube family, because he is my only grandson so far. Mother, if you're listening, Bakari has become a member. Everyone is welcome in Bakari. Auntie Joanne says, hi, B. Our treasured home. And Nancy, just talking about the earrings that I got from her and her granddaughter. Yankee sister, who's one of my neighbors, said, Nana's so proud of you. Nana's always talking about you guys. Yeah, that's what Nana's do. Bakari says, hey, Nana. Thank you, Bakari. I love you, too. Love you. Ego amote. So, you guys, my Renaissance grandma says, welcome, Bakari. I This is what I love about having this little YouTube channel is because good friends become family and family is everything. So, now, that being said, speaking of family, I want to show you guys something. Bakari actually saw it on Facebook this morning because... You see those two little guys over there? It's a little bit of a glare. Well, the one all the way to the left with the darker suit on, that's my maternal grandfather. That's Grandpa Charlie and his identical twin brother, Uncle Winfield. Hey, Clovis Gardner. Thank you for coming and welcome, welcome, welcome. So that is my grandfather. And his identical twin brother. The reason I'm showing you guys this, this, and sorry, it's crooked. It's hard for me to, oh, now it's kind of straight. Because yesterday, March 20th, would have been his 125th birthday, the two twins. And I, I knew both of them. I grew up with them in my life. We're talking about legacy and family. And then the gentleman on this side... The one on the single picture, that is my great-grandfather, Grandpa Nelson Thomas. Wenard Thomas is my grandfather's name, and Winfield Thomas. And they are buried in the Thomas Family Cemetery. My mom's family actually has a cemetery that is a registered historic landmark. Everybody buried there has been documented by the state of Pennsylvania as being authentic family members. And if you look at them, you can see that they're part Native American, but you can look at their cheek cheekbones and stuff. And I would, hey, Francesca, thank you for coming and welcome. And I am proud to say that my mom's family has fought in every war in the United States since the beginning including the Revolutionary War and how her great, my mom's great grandfather ended up with a walk-in coal mine in Pennsylvania is that it was part of his military acquaintance or connections that he was able to purchase 400 and something odd acres in Pennsylvania in the like 1850s, 1860s, before the Civil War. And he was, my Renaissance grandma is sending me two pairs of jeans snatched for $2 for my future bags. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, um, I will put my email address on because if you email me, my Renaissance grandma, and I appreciate you, thank you so much. I appreciate everything that you guys do to help the channel. I'm so excited. Uh, there's Ellen Panky at gmail.com. And if you'd like to help the channel with a cash app, it's not required, but the cash app is dollar sign Ellen Panky 13. So the email is Ellen Panky at gmail.com. So I'm going to put that up so that we have more screen to see because I want to show you what I've been doing. I showed you the, I showed you the, the beats already. And 
speaking of jeans, I've been up, you know, I talk about using 15 minutes a day to do something creative. Uh, my grandson, Bakari, if I can brag on you a little bit, Bakari, Bakari graduated and was a great, great student at the University of Southern California. That's all I'm going to say about him right now, because this is not like People try to ride the backs of their children and grandchildren. This is just a channel I have to enjoy myself and to talk about family history. So some of the jeans that I've collected from my granddaughter, I haven't cut up the ones from Big Rooster yet because those are going for a special, special project where I can get big pieces of fabric Plus, because Big Rooster is not a little rooster. He's a big guy. I will show you guys in the next couple of weeks. I showed you how to debone a shirt. I did not. Hey, Dolores, thank you for coming. And welcome, welcome, welcome. I appreciate each and every one of you. And Bakari, I know that it's a W-O-R-K day, work day for you. So appreciate you taking time out from your your work to come see Nana. So these, I have not only deboned these, all these jeans, I have 30 blocks here that are nine inches a piece because I'm going to add on to the memory quilt I made from my dad's old jeans. I cut up one, I cut up, I cut up four of my work shirts, Bakari, when Nana used to go into work in the office, I used to wear pearls to work. And sometimes a Ralph Lauren button down dress shirt. So I don't plan on wearing these anymore or doing that kind of work anymore. So I cut up some of my shirts. This is one, I deboned it. This is another one. And I said, well, I'm going to add to my dad's shirt. Actually, I didn't bring that quilt in here. It's a quilt that's made, a memory quilt made of his old shirts and pants. And my dad worked in construction all of his life to send his six children to college. And therefore, I was able to wear pearls to work and Ralph Lauren dress shirts because of the sweat of his back. So I said I wanted to make his quilt a little bit bigger for myself now that I'm older and thickerer. So I've got these all cut up already. So I decided I needed 30 more blocks to add to his quilt. So I cut up enough jeans that I have three or four different colors of jeans to go around the edges. And... I have started, this was one of my good Ralph Lauren shirts that I cut up. And these little pieces, I plan on making a legacy Southern strip quilt the way my paternal grandmother used to make her quilts. And I plan to use all these old fabrics in that. Yes, sissy, look at that. So I've been working, I've been doing my 15 minutes a day. One thing I wanted to talk to you all about, and that's that I know that a lot of you are growing herbs. Well, I wanted to tell you that herbs are good for eating. They're good for tinctures. They're good for medicine. They're good for all types of things. But I haven't seen anyone, I haven't seen anyone using them to make perfumes. Well, this... I'm going to see if I can, whoops, pop goes the weasel. It wouldn't be a chat if I didn't drop something. This is a perfume designer. She's based out of London. Her name is Job Malone. She's one of our family's best favorite perfumists because all of her colognes are herb and fruit based. I don't know if you can see, this one says, English pear and freesia cologne. Well, colognes take, I, most of the money goes in the packaging. I know that from the research that I've done. This was just a little sample. And 
it says the essence of autumn, mellow, cool, golden, fruity. And it says try layering with this, that, and the other. And then this, of course, was a sample I wanted to show you. And this was a gift from a family member of an actual bottle of the perfume. And there are different flavors. This one is lime, basil, and mandarin cologne. I just wanted you to see that you can combine several types of fruits and herbs and make your own. Now you're speaking my language. I heard perfumes and came up out of the bushes. Please do tell me more. I'm not sure. If you Google Joe Malone, you'll see that all of her perfumes are based on fruits and veggies and healthy. And they smell really, really good. Now, originally, these were not my favorite perfumes. I was into the French perfumes and the this and that. But this is a pleasant, clean, light smell. I'll tell you one thing I do, Psalm 146. I take my rosemary and olive oil and I infuse the rosemary and the olive oil and I use a couple drops of it for conditioning my hair and my scalp. So you guys who are not using herbs for, I think they, well, I know that they use some types of alcohol or whatever, but I'd like to see, I'd like to see you come up with your own Psalm 146. I for sure would buy some of it. I for sure would buy of it. Speaking of growing things, when I lived in California, one time I lived with Auntie Joanne and Uncle Roscoe, and other times I lived in other parts of California. Well, my dad, my dad planted Granny Smith apple trees, and I don't know what all trees. Auntie Joanne, Francesca said she loves all natural items. Oh, Auntie Joanne is telling on me. Jean Patou 1000 was my favorite perfume. It was crazy expensive. It's one of the most per expensive perfumes ever made. But I worked hard and I used to save up my money and buy it. Auntie Joanne's favorite perfume was Coco by Coco Chanel. But I just want to say this. You have pheromones and special body chemicals that if you pick the right, the right scent, it combines with your natural body essence and it just goes forever. 1000 was the one perfume the mailman could walk by and ask my husband, did your wife just leave here? Because I smell her perfume. It was that unique. If you could grow Magnolia Grandifolora, you would use that as your base. You know, sometimes you can buy the base from other places that sell it. I do know one thing, the patchouli essence oil is used in most perfumes all over the place. So maybe the patchouli oil can be used to extract magnolia blossoms. You would always get samples and make them last, Nancy. That's funny. MRG, everyone. Thanks all of you who are in here. So one thing I wanted to bring up, you guys, is it's National Crochet Month. Month. Jo Auntie Joanne can crochet. I have this in here in case I find something I need to save, like a lot of seeds or something. You use a lot of Bath and Body Works, Francesca. You and the kids can be making some of your own. Dolores says, here in Georgia, there's a place you can make your own perfume. You might try it. Oh, that is so fun. Oh, Paco Rabanne. That used to be one of mine. Carolyn Herrera, all the good stuff. Bulgari is another one of my, you go online, you try to find these perfumes. They've got so many different bottles and derivatives. It's hard to find out if that one's really yours. So since it's National Crochet Month, I wasn't crocheting this particular time, but I had a doctor's appointment yesterday and I hate to wait. Oh, I hate to wait. So this is what I do when I'm waiting I take some little knitting or crochet. I have been crocheting over 71 years. You heard me say that my grandfather would be 125 years old yesterday. 
he was born in 1899 and he passed in 1980. 1980. So he was 81 years old when he passed. He was about 50 something when I was born. So I think I was about 35 years old when grandpa passed. Is that a dishcloth? Yes, sissy. It's a dishcloth. Uh, my grandmother taught us how to crochet and to knit. And I just love doing it. I make these, I make a lot of hats for babies in the, especially the neonatal intensive care unit. In Haiti, I know there's a lot of strife going on there, and I don't know how to even get anything there. But when they had the big earthquake years ago, my mother and my granddaughter and I knitted over 100 cap preemie caps, and we sent them to Haiti for the babies because there were no hospitals. There were no ways to keep the babies warm. Sometimes you walk around inside Macy's to get them papers that they spray samples on and stick them in the vents in your car as free air freshener. Auntie Joanne says, is that dishcloth mine? Auntie Joanne says that about every quilt, every everything that I make, she's always the first one to see it because she's always under her big sister. Dolores said she's in Georgia. Oh, I said that. And she's going to try make it. I'd like to see everybody try to make them for men and women. I used to wear some kinds of cologne that are for men and women. Was it Calvin Klein that I used to wear? I used to wear, and it was uni, unisex. It was for everybody. You know how to knit, but we'll learn how to crochet. When you're going to sit your little behind still long enough, you know, you know where I be at over here. The kids can drop you off on the way to ballet and pick your little butt up. Um, oh, that's right. We claiming the surgery thing right now. Oh, I get it. Oh, yeah. CK1, that's the one that was unisex, Psalm 146. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So... That being said, I have a couple of other things I want to tell you guys about. Oh, when I went to the doctor's office yesterday, wellness with frugal mama. Hello for your morning workout. You guys, if you guys are not working out, there are a couple of people. Kay Renee is working out every day. Wellness with frugal mama have channels and they're working out every day. They're in different, and there are several people in here. I work out every day. You would never know it, and I don't talk about it. But my grandson, my grandson is a professional athlete. His father is a professional athlete. Uh, the girls do a lot of finger knitting. That's really cool, too. That's really cool, too. And my grandson, my son, are some of my greatest inspirations. When I lived in L.A., my son and I used to go to the Iron Gym together. We worked out at World Gym. I called myself being a bodybuilder until I found out that in order to compete, you had to do certain things that were against my personal standards, and I didn't do that. But I still work out, and I'm still in good shape, even if I ain't shaped so good for a 75-year-old. My blood pressure, when I went to the doctor last week, was... 104 over, no, 106 over 64. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So I stay fit. One of the things I want to encourage you is when you go in the grocery store, I don't usually follow other channels that cook because I'm really an excellent cook. I can cook almost anything. I have my own little like flavors and stuff. I have not been able to stand a lot, so I don't do a lot of cooking videos, but I plan to do more in, in the future. Everybody's saying that's a great blood pressure. I'm trying to keep it, and I hope to make it better. I have something called a desk cycle. It can go under your desk, and it's similar to the life cycles in the gym, the trade name life cycle. In that professional pull, you can adjust the tension. No, it's not a Peloton like K. Renee rides in my daughter, but you can get something, something, something. 
And so I have one over there and I use it. I've got to, now that my knee, I'm going to therapy in an orthopedic gym with a professional trainer. So I will be working hard, 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 harder. These little magazines are in the grocery store and I've been seeing some really, really different recipes in here just out of curiosity looking for something new to do i don't want to lick my fingers like this one this one says a recipe for peas and mint and it has ricotta dumpling with peas who to thunk it who to thunk it bakari eats a lot of vegan food and he cooks excellent, excellent Thai food. He cooks excellent Thai food, my grandson. He, when I go to California, he's Nana. He has a deep voice. Nana, do you want to cook for me? And if you want to see what Bakari looks like, you guys, you can go to my birthday video, The Big Surprise, in November when I was at Auntie Joanne's house. And he surprises Nana. He surprises Nana, him and his dad, showing up. And spring pizza with asparagus and prosciutto. This is something really weird. Rhubarb and strawberry uh, with beef. I don't eat a lot of beef. Spinach and artichoke. Just different things. Auntie Ellen. Oh, Miss Ellen Campbell. Thank you for coming. She says, Auntie Ellen you should get your prize by Saturday. Congratulations. I'd like to go to the post office on Saturday. And that's going to be a big surprise. I have to mail a couple of things out. And I won a prize on Ellen Campbell's channel. I'm going to try to get Nightbot to help me set it up by Saturday, two days away from now, because I have... 1,500 loyal family members now. And I want you guys to celebrate with me. I'm not going to talk about what we're going to do because that's when people come from nowhere. They show up for one day. But I would like for all of you, within the sound of my voice, all of you are channel members, subscribers, who have ever visited the channel, I hope that you're able to come on Saturday, March 23rd. Today is my one of my nephew's birthday, Jojo. I can't, I think he's 34. 34, and he's six foot seven. He's six foot seven. I got some tall folks in the family, including Auntie Joanne. Auntie Joanne is saying congratulations. I love fabric. I want two kinds, but I'm going to do a... I'm going to do a, 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 a show and tell, I guess. Speaking of which, I want to show you guys. I got this one little paltry pack of bags, you guys, so that I can share some of my seeds that I have. Um, Psalm 146 sent me enough seeds that I can share. Oh, it's Angel's birth. No. Angel's birthday? What is it? March 20th? Her, her, her dog, Angel, is Mr. Hershey's daughter. Val Creates. Now, Val Creates is another person who makes earrings. Who makes earrings. And you can go to her channel and watch her. She does videos almost every day. Oh, a a a Angelo's birthday. My nephew. My nephew, Angelo. Auntie Joanne and Uncle Roscoe's son, Angelo. The kids are so close. So these are some bags where I will be bagging up some seeds. I don't have a lot because I don't grow a lot. Psalm 146, I'm going to send you some more butternut squash. I have to crack him open. I've been letting him sit on the table. Karen's little garden says, hello, everyone. I've been seeing you, Cannon. Karen, I saw your strawberry preserves. I saw your carrots. I saw something else. I saw your almonds. I see you guys. But 
the problem is what had happened was I enjoy watching the channels, but I watch on my big TV in my bedroom. I have glaucoma. And for those of you who are new, don't know, I'm totally blind in my left eye. So my right eye is tired during the day from looking at everything, from transporting myself from place to place, walking with my walker now. I want to tell you something funny. Walking with this walker, I have a rollator with wheels on the front, wheels in the back. Please tell me my shoulders are tired from pushing this stuff. I take it when I have to walk like 50 yards to 100 yards, when I have to do a lot of walking in case I get tired with my four-week-old knee replacement and I want to sit down. I have my own transportation. I can be independent. Oh, also, I'm trashing all of the carts in all the stores. They all run differently, just like a microwave. They all have their set of gears. I'm bumping into everything in every store, learning how to <laughs> learning how to drive them. But so far, nobody's been injured as a result of me and this knee. But you know what I hate? When I'm parked too far away and I'm trying to get something out of the freezer section, like I was trying to get a chicken pot pie so I wouldn't have to cook and trying to reach the dorm and then you have to stand up and sit down. Yes, I'm doing my squats, bougie prepper, but still, it's a lot. It's a lot. But please tell me how my grandmother in North Carolina, she had a little plow in her little garden. And she used to push it. It had one little pointy thing like this down to the ground and handles on it. And she pushed it through the dirt. How does she push it through the dirt? And I can't push this thing through the air. I cannot. <laughs> I cannot. I get the gears mixed up. Oh, and then guess what I found out? The same thing that was on the right was on the left. But they didn't tell me that. Speaking of squash, how can she tell if a kabocha is right? I have one, but it's all green with one small orange spot on the bottom. Val creates a saying, hello, Joanne Stevens. You know, it's so interesting learning from all of you guys. So I have a project. So I will be sharing some of my seeds Sissy, I will send you some of the different kinds of beets that Psalm 146 was so kind to send. Uh, Rose Grows in Harlem likes beets. I will share some with her as well. And I, I share what I have. My mother had six kids and whoever came. Oh, I was telling you, mommy used to make pancakes. She'd open a five gallon, I mean, five pound bag of pancakes. And she would make those little, little like silver dollar pancakes until all the kids, all the neighbors, everybody could eat as many as you want. You'd get like, however, three or four in your little stack, go sit down and eat them, go get seconds, thirds, fourths, whatever. We always fed everybody, everybody. Look at my clothes falling off my shoulders. Then something else I got in the mail. I ordered it. Remember a couple of weeks ago, those of you been following the channel, I bought a seat cushion because this one got a hole in it some, some kind of way. This is a gypsy sit upon and I use it with a metal chair so that the chair doesn't roll away. And I fall again. I had a bad fall last year. So the new one came. They come with a pump now. But the pump didn't work. I couldn't get the air in there. There's no tendrils or stem on it. Oh, she found it at the grocery store. So let it to, to sit on the table probably for a while, Sam. So, you guys, I bought some inflating needles. And I will save one to blow up my little whoopee cushion and the others I will give to my great grandson who is about an hour from me and a boss basketball player it's basketball season 
and he always has a basketball with him near him something something um the kids i'm proud to say like 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 sports so now that that's being said we talked about grandpa charlie's birthday you have one of those frugal mama isn't that gypsy the gypsy sit upon this one is actually 10 years old hermana has to run out okay thank you um maria graham also got one lately and she loves it. it keeps your back straight so that you're letting your abs do all the work so that being said mother if you're watching i'm taking ah your daddy's quilt oh psalm 146 i don't know if you're back in the bushes or not but i'm going to make a special quilt for my mom the southern strip quilt that i told you guys about as soon as i finish these two little projects i'm going to start on a year-long project hasta luego blessings yankee sister francesca saying she'll see her sister yankee sister later they go live on wednesdays yankee sister and francesca and they do bible study for those of you interested in getting the word yes you're here in the bushes sam so sam do you mind if i use this fabric that you put in here and cut it up and put in the new quilt that i'm making for the family for my mom's bed i would love to be able to include this fabric it's going to be a strip quilt i'm putting part of my shirts in there how they used to it's mostly fabric that i've collected over the last at least 10 15 years when i finish i give a lot of it away i make a lot of charity quilts i used to and i would save the whatever was left over and put it in a box i'll show you the box pretty soon pretty soon so that being said let me find uh-oh so my mother gave me a quilt to repair and i couldn't find out what I'm showing you my lap because when I was looking at the replay, I found a piece that had a little hole in it, but I thought that, oh boy, now I can't find it again. I thought, I think that it was actually mildew. I'm not going to do a lot to repair it because honestly, the quilts are not, they're, they're, they're rough and different people do my mom's laundry. Oh, here it is. Here it is, you guys. Whew. Now, I don't know if you can see it. Can you see this hole right here? There's the batting in it and it has cotton batting and this. So I want to show you what to do. You're actively keeping your health. You can't wait to start my journey walking around her town. Well, I'll tell you, I live in a senior apartment building and they have a walking club starting next Tuesday at 10 o'clock, you just meet everybody out front and you walk with in groups or together. So it's like you have a walking club. 755 Media, thank you for coming and welcome. And thank you for being a channel member. We appreciate you. I was watching you to yesterday. Yesterday, I forgot what you were doing. I can't remember the name of the video. And I just want to say this. Sometimes I look at it's a video. Sometimes it's a live. And I'm looking at it later on. Some people get offended because I didn't call it the right thing. 
I'm just happy that I even remembered that I saw it because I'll turn on things in the middle of the night, but I was watching, watching you. So this is what I want to show you guys. This is a utility quilt. What do I mean by a utility quilt? Some of you have quilts that belong to family members that you got from family members. This quilt is actually in pretty good shape, except for here. It might've gotten caught on something. So what you do is you repair it with what you have. So this happens to be a strip that I was using for, I've already sewn it like for, I want to say a tie, maybe for a handbag. Sometimes I use them for key fobs, but I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with this one for my mother, just so that she can keep using this quilt. So I'm going to take this little strip like this and hand sew it. And that's it. You know, if this was one of my show quilts that had gotten a hole in it, I would take the piece out, cut it out. But this is not what this was intended to be. This quilt was made from a piece of Grandpa Charlie's shirt. I told you he passed in 1980, and my mother had one shirt that belonged to her daddy, and this was the shirt. The shirt actually was a flannel shirt. See the square? And I cut the shirt up into all these, all these tiny squares. So you see me, I'm just hand sewing this little strip and I'm doing it in white thread so that you can see what I'm doing. It doesn't have to be fancy. You guys don't overthink it. Don't over, you know, don't spend your lifetime repairing a quilt that, you know, is going to be used at, under the car when people are making repairs. I'm just being facetious or saying, for example, it is what it is. It's an old quilt. I love looking at pictures of my mom and the kids sitting on one of my old quilts. So I'm just hand sewing this little patch. This little patch over the holes so she can keep on using it. The hole won't get any bigger. The kids can enjoy it. And they'll make beautiful, beautiful photographs and family member memories. It's not that serious. It's not that serious. So those of you who have, everybody saying hello to 755 Media. Thank you. I'm just going to keep sewing this little bit so that you guys can see it. I should have brought a brought a thimble over but again it's not that serious i'm just sewing around this little edge will they see the white stitches on this black fabric fabric probably is it like a show quilt where it's going to matter no it's not this is a quilt for the family to love it's a memory quilt it's part of what she has left of her father and I will be able to give it to her to enjoy in her nineties. And the sooner I get it back to her, the better I will be going there for Easter. So mother, you will have your quilt repaired by Easter. So this little strip is going up here. Then I'm going to treat it like it was a corner on a binding. I'm going to sew this down again. And if it looks like it was hand stitch and hand repair, it's because it was. It's a little ouch me so that she can keep on using her quilt and the family can keep on using it. So how many of you, how many of you have old quilts 
that you can use that might need a little bit of repair. And you can you can put patches, you can put patches on them. Oh, by the way, you guys, today is Thursday. So at seven o'clock, Miss Shirley, OG Gardener, will be going live. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Grow Big TV will be going live. Probably Vision Preparedness. Probably Planter Garden TV. You can check later on and see who is who else is going live. So I'm going to put this down because it's heavy on my lap, but I wanted you to see it. And this is what this little patch is going to look like. It's going to be in the same V chevron shape, just like the other ones. And mom will be able to use it again okay so again i would like to thank each of you who are in here oh sissy said the arizona peacock needs repairs probably needs replacement because of your daughter sitting up there scratching on it hello chap hope y'all are good um, Auntie Joanne's little angel likes to scratch on it. You guys are actually going to get another little quilt at some point to go on those sofas. But I was too busy making neck bone pillows when I was out there this year. This year. So I'm going to take you guys over to my work area. And I want to show you what's going on over here, inch by inch, step by step. I would like to thank each of you who has come by. I see 20 of you are in the chat. I hope I have 20 thumbs up. Oh, and Bakari, by the way, if you're still here, I... I have a project for you. It's coming as soon as Nana gets it in, in the, in the mail. I already completed one thing, but you know, your dear old Nana needs help. And one of the neighbors in the, in the building was helping me do something. So I gave one that was completed. One of my subscribers ordered a pillow i hate sewing in black i can't see black people who sew with black professional quilters like myself they use neutral neutral thread on black because you can't see black on black so this is one that i made you know who you are your pillow is finished and i brought it over here so that the little part the little opening that needs to be sewn shut so that I can do it with black thread and you won't be able to see it on the inside. So what is going on over here in the studio? Those of you, Auntie Joanne said fur baby quilt. <laughs> Auntie Joanne's fur baby and Uncle Roscoe their, their, she gets on their bed. She gets up on their bed. You patch yours on the sewing machine, sewing both sides at once, using straight pins to line them up. Um, I'm just going to sew this one little side on hand, but it depends on what's convenient for you guys. This is a king size quilt. Miss Ellen, it's 120 inches by 120 inches. This is a big quilt. And for me to hold it up and get it under here and twist it around. Oh, and it's in the middle of the quilt. It's not going to fit under this little ma machine under the neck. Eco neighbor. Hello, nephew. Thank you for coming and welcome, welcome, welcome. I appreciate you. 
could you use colored thread to make it eye catching? I don't want the, I don't want it to be eye catching. Um, I'm Francesca. The quilt that I made for my mother is blue and gray and black. And I want the white stitches to show kind of as an accent to show that it was repaired with love. In fact, the black strip that I put on there is going to blend in and it has, but they're different. There are different ways to do it. If it were your quilt, you could do that design. That would be great. But this is the one that I chose and I wanted to get it right back to her as quickly as possible because I have 5,000 things going on over here and they're going to use it. So without further ado, let me show you what I've been, what I did with my 15 minutes extra today. So this is the bag for ARD, Mrs. ARD, Eco Neighbor is saying hello, everyone. Eco Neighbor, for those of you who don't know, is Gigi Natural's husband. And they are building a homestead in Florida on 20 acres of raw land. They're putting in wells, they're putting in septic tanks, they have chickens. They have Malinois security dogs. They're just doing the darn thing. What I want you to see about this quilt. Now this, I mean, this bag is a quilted bag. Now this one, I do want my accents to show. So this is a hand cut flower, hand sewn petals in the middle. This is an original design. I put a green button to match it. I'm not holding it straight. This one had for details has pure calf leather on the front and the back. And it has a pink clasp inside. Inside my Renaissance grandma said, so love that inside is a cell phone pocket. And this one doesn't have a dollar in it yet. No, does it have to have a dollar? No, but it's a family tradition to put a dollar in the, in the pocket. So this one, those of you who are going, I, I do this to show you that if you're making a bag, I do all the details while it is still flat. While, while it is still flat, I'm going to move. This is the box. These, these are the next neck bone pillows. Bakari, one of these might or might not be yours. Let me know if you like the dog bone pillow with the footprints or the camo one. And Nana will get it in there. Oh, Eco Neighbor sent a $20 super sticker. Thank you for so much, Eco Neighbor. I appreciate you. Juicing with Jay, our old neighborhood in California. Oh, I started telling you guys that my dad planted all these fruit trees in Linwood, California. And my sister would pick a whole basket of apples and she was taking classes, interior design classic um, classes in the, um, on the other side of town, on the west side of town near the beaches. And she would drop off these apples at my house on her way to class. When she would get out of class three hours later on her way home, I would have all these handmade apple pies from scratch for her to take home. Do you remember that? Hey, Miss Shirley, thank you for coming and welcome, welcome, welcome. You guys, don't forget, I told you Miss Shirley is going live at 7 p.m. Unfortunately, her big sister will probably be taking a nap because I've been up. So you guys, this, this bag is finished, except I'm going 
to sew the, the corners. What I want to show you, what I want to show you, I left my pins over there. The next, the next step to finishing these, uh, Sissy says, I do remember those pies. ARD. Oh, guess what? You almost missed it, sir. This is Mrs. ARD's Penny Panky designer bag. Penny is my nickname that my family calls me, you guys, and that's the name I put on the bags. It is custom and original design. I put the pink on for a reason. It has the green, the, the like green matching button inside a pocket for the cell phone, and it is trimmed in calf leather. So what I wanted to show you is that, you guys, I'm going to put a French seam on here. Why? Because a French, and I'm going to make it thick because, yes, I could serge it. Yes, I could do it a lot of different ways. But again, for everything that you do, there's more than one way to, to skin a cat. And there's no right way or wrong way. It's whatever you decide to do. It's your design. It's your garden. It's your kitchen. You just do whatever the heck you want. That's just it. Whatever the heck you want. So I, too, would like to remember some pies. Oh, Psalm, I wish you were here. I wish you were here. We have a family thing. Like when I'm at Auntie Joanne and Uncle Roscoe's house, I just go in the kitchen and cook. They have a big family room, big dining area, big kitchen. And I just go in there and cook. And there are no rules. It's like, I could be cooking Thanksgiving dinner. We're not waiting until everything gets done to set it up. If you want a wing, a leg, whatever, while it's done, the cornbread, just take some. We'll take a picture of the plate. We have so many. <laughs> you know, I do what I want. That's exactly right. You know, when you're grown, you do what grown folks do. You do whatever you want to do. And there are no rules. I appreciate you teaching, like, especially in the sewing and quilting. No problem. I'm still going to come up with you, Nancy. I'm just not able to go much more than, like, 15 minutes, half hour, an hour. And I don't want to mess up your life. I'm going to come up and maybe we could do a little project together. One that you, you design, you and Anastasia, or, or how however you want to do it so you guys in order to get this oh my gosh a resilient dad thank you very much motivation for the motivators thank you for your super chat auntie joanne misses those meals i think it's my turn to get a meal you never did make me any paschettis when i was out there my sister makes the best spaghetti i never made it she said she couldn't get in the kitchen i was cooking every day yeah, I take up the whole space. I take up the whole, the whole space. I tend to take up the whole space wherever I go. I'm just that kind of chick. <laughs> so what I do, you guys, to make this one, this one stand flat, in each corner, I'm going to make a little cutout of two and a half inches. How do I know it's two and a half inches? I have a special little template or not because i make so many bags Ta -da! two and one quarter i hate not seeing this is the opposite okay so what i'm going to do is i'm not going to sew it today it will magically be sewn, and you can mark with whatever you like. I love these Ticonderoga number two pens, pencils. I like this. So what I'm going to do is make a 
a mark like this. And come over to this corner and make another another one. The main part is that I know where to stop sewing on the edges. But what I want you to see is this. I'm going to take my handy dandy, very sharp tailor's scissors and I'm going to cut this out. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. This is going to make the bag sit flat on the bottom. So there's one. There are other ways to do this again. And I do them different ways for different reasons. I want this one to be lightweight. I'm using lightweight handles. I'm using this lightweight. Say frugal, keep it going, keep it going. Mike, Mike, Mike. Hey, Mom, Miss Shirley, OG, a Brazilian dad is speaking to you. So, you guys, I'm showing what you can do with 15 minutes a day. I've talked about so many little different things. And I will see you Friday. You're all cordially invited to come to the grand celebration of 1,500 family members. Thank you. So do what you love, love what you do. If you like the channel, please consider subscribing to it. Turn on the notification bell so that you know when we go live. And I try to talk about something interesting all the time, current events, family things, so that you can keep up with your family history. You see my family comes in and out of the chat. And you know, that's one thing I want to say about the social media is to respect yourself. You know, you get involved in different disputes, different little pettiness. You all have a family. When I'm no longer on earth, my grandchildren, my grandchildren's grandchildren will see what I said and did in public. I never want to bring shame on my family unless I do it face to face. <laughs> so you guys, for Lydia Best Yet Journey is live now. And please tell her, I asked you guys to come say hello. She just started going live again. I love you. Ego Amate. Oh, by the way, in American Sign Language, sometimes I hold my hand sideways because I'm not looking there. You point your hands when you're talking to the person you're talking to and you keep them upright. So here's an I, here's an L, here's a U. I love you. Ego Amate. Love you guys. See you Saturday.